Hello everyone, uh, welcome to uh, another alert mentoring session. This time we are on uh, Instagram and we are going to be interviewing one of the best DJs uh, in the world. He's been playing for more than 30 years. Uh, he's a fellow of another big group of legends like Paul Oakenfall, uh, John DeWitt, Sasha and many other big uh, uh, DJs. For me, it's such a pleasure because it's a DJ and a person that I know personally that uh, he's a tremendous uh, person. He has really, truly passion um, about, uh, about what he's doing. So let's, let's invite, let's invite Hernan. Hey. Hernan. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Good, good. Is, is I'm it... so excited to talk with you. And first of all, thank you so much for dedicating some time uh, to uh, all our fans, your fans, and give us some tips about uh, uh, club, club music, DJ tips for club music for us. It's such a pleasure coming from a legend uh, from you. So thank you so much, Hernan. <laughs> no, Mark, thank you for inviting me. You know, uh, you, are, you are a dear friend. I'm, I'm a big fan of you for many, many years, and I'm so happy that you now you have the Aula School, you know, and even when it's going to be a bit strange for us to be speaking in, in English, where we no. always speak in Spanish or even a little in Catalan, but, uh, you know, uh, we, we have to do it for everybody. So we do, I, I guess you said already, like, we do it now in English, and then next Monday we're going to do it in Spanish. Yes. Yes, yes, I told them because, uh, you know, um, we have a, such a big community of Spanish speakers and uh, some of them are so used to see you and me uh, speaking in Spanish. So this time we made it in English. So again, for, for those who just uh, hit right now in their life, we're doing exactly the same mentoring session in Spanish, Monday, same time, same channels. So after the introduction, and uh, I did a, a quick introduction about your career that I think it doesn't need introduction, but uh, I already did. Um, let's go to uh, ask you the first question that I think every DJ uh, wants to know, and it's what is your actual DJ set? Because we know it changed uh, during the time. So speak us about your headphones, USB, or anything related with the sets. Anything you think, not only technically, you think there's other gadgets that matter for your DJ set? I don't know, like a... So a pillow for sleep or whatever, just please let us know. Uh, well, uh, as, as a DJ, you know, I, I always like the, the manual thing, like feeling that I'm, I'm touching things. So uh, I don't have any problems with, with computers or anything else. But when I play, I, I like to be, you know, do it with my hands, probably because I'm an I'm, I'm old school guy. I start with vinyl. I, I've been DJ for 40 years now since the first first time I, I started playing. And the first 20 has been with vinyl, uh, which is all the vinyl I have on my back. Um, but then uh, there's, there's no way to, to deny that, you know, the technology allows you a, way, a, a lot of things to, to do. And, and I found with, with, you know, using CDJs is the media that I like the better because I still feel that I touch things. I, I do all the manual things, but at the same time, I have all the, all the technology sides uh, to, to do things that I, I can improve my mixing and, and the music I play and the way I play. So uh, I usually ask for any club I go to four CDJs, um, Nexus 2, of course, and Mixer could be the 900 or the new B10. The new B10 is super cool too because it has a, a few better features or new improvements like, you know, you have a compressor so you, you can uh, uh, balance better different kinds of sounds you can play. Maybe you play an old track or something that is not properly mastered, and you can compress it and, and make it sound more more better than than before that you just have the game. And and then you have a different uh, um, monitor system, so you can if you play back to back, for example, both DJs can be on hands on all the time. Well, with the 900 or the other mixes, if you play back to back, when the other DJ is playing these 20 minutes, there's no way for you to cue anything or something. So it's it's a, it's a really good future, the, the new ones. Um, then uh, headphones, also I'm old school. So I started in 1996, so 24 years ago, they came the, the Technics headphones. When the Technics was king, way before Pioneer, uh, Pioneer became big uh, uh, about 2000s when they, they created the, the CDJs. Before that, Pioneer wasn't part of, of club music as, as we know it now. And Technics was the king because of the turntables, especially. You know, the mixers, there were a, a few variety, but te Technics 200 were the, the king of, of clubs everywhere. So 
when they came out with the headphones, the 12,000, also the same number, 1,200 12, headphones, uh, I fell in love with them because of the size. You know, any DJ knows that when you play music, you don't necessarily have the, the best sound because you're only cueing kicks or, 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 or some melodies, but you, you need something that is comfortable for you. For me, for example, the Pioneer CD, um, headphones are really good in, in sound. I have the new ones, Pioneer send it to me. But they are too big. I feel like I'm like this, so I'm not comfortable. Then, for example, I don't know another classic like Sennheiser H2 HD25. They, they, for me, they are super comfortable because they are small, but the medium are a bit too high. So uh, these uh, techniques uh, are are the perfect size for me when I, I put it like this. You know, it's like it's it's perfect for me. And this is just brand new. I after 24 years. In 19, uh, 2019, last year, they came with a new model for the first time. And they only, they prove it is, is very simple. They only changed this, which uh -huh. before it, it would break. So now now you can change the cable. And, and the cable also has... You just read my mind because I just wrote, they still like, I just wrote a question for you. They still made it because they're super old and I didn't know that it was a new model. No, up until, up until last year, uh, I used to go every time I go to Japan, I mean, I go every year, but every two years or so, I would buy new ones because there was, for a while, there was the only place where you can find them. There, there, there was only in Japan. Uh, in, in, in the first 23 years, they only changed two things. Uh, from the originals, they were black with a with thin cable. Then they came the silver one, mother silver, with, with a, like I say, that, like the rolling cable, like the old telephone cable. And now these new ones are a mixture of that because you have a li a, the, the first part of the cable is like this. And the second part is, is like this, which is, I, I, I wasn't sure at the beginning when I saw it, but, uh, but now using them is, is kind of comfortable because the, the, the part that goes along your body is, is the thin cable, which is more comfortable. And the heavy part is the one that goes near the mixer. So if you move around the DJ boot, it's really comfortable. Uh, then keep going with that. Uh, pen drives, I use these ones, uh, SanDisk uh, 3.1. USB, 250 feet, 256. It's, it's kind of super fast. And, and they're a big, big, you know, I, I would prefer something smaller, but, um, but this is really reliable. Uh, I always carry three or four with me. I, I know it's, I sound maybe exaggerated, but I make four copies, same copies of everything, uh, just in case. I could, you could use, of course, um, the cable to connect the Ethernet cable to connect, connect between CDJs. But I prefer to have a just in case. Uh, I do. The, I use the cable, but also, you know, once I hear about some DJs, uh, uh, his uh, USB being broken and then had to stop playing, and I feel so embarrassed. Not for me, for them. And I say, how are you gonna tell the promoter? Oh, sorry, I cannot keep playing because my one pen drive is broken. <laughs> uh, it goes, Listen, we we are supposed to be professionals, you know, and and you know, and world class DJs. So we are you are not allowed to to a, a mistake like that. So just in case, since it costs nothing and not I'm not talking not only money, it costs only enough time. You you if you have a USB hub for the for the computer for the Mac, uh, you can charge the four uh, pen drives at the same time. So it's no extra time. It's just maybe as I said, maybe I'm being too careful, but in these things. When sometimes you have 10, 20,000 people in front of you, you can never be too careful. You know, you, you have to be uh, a professional. So that's what I do. And then I carry my, my MacBook Pro computer uh, everywhere I go. Uh, it's just, I would say, it's all, almost part of my body. Uh, even when I, I, I only not use it when I play, but I work all my music through the computer. Uh, I, I download all the stuff and I organize within iTunes or the, if, if you have the new MacBook Pro is called music. There's no iTunes anymore, which is sad because I really like it. After 20 years, they, they, they said goodbye right. to iTunes. But now, now there's the music software, which is similar. And then, of course, Recordbox to go through Pioneer, which is through the CDJs, which is, you know, super, um, super handy. And especially the last two, three years, they improved a lot. The first Recordbox wasn't really good. But the, 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 the last three or four years, it's been very, very strong and stable with a lot of features that they are very handy to play, you know. Uh, these days we get so much music all the time, you know, so uh, it's, it's handy to have not just the name of the track to keep it on your mind. So different things like the change of colors of the, of the, of the parts of the track, things that they will help you to play music that not necessarily, you know, enough and, and still do, do a good mix and stuff like that. It, it helps 
a lot. So I, I really, I really, I really like the part when you say like you may a copy of four times of the same USB. I do the same, but it's as, as you said, as a respect, you know. And Ethernet sometimes, you know, if the wire broke or whatever, it happens, you know. Uh, and and it's more safety to have uh, different uh, USB even with the same music in each uh, in each CDJ. So I think it's a super good advice, not only for amateur DJs, especially also for the top DJs. That as you said, it's so embarrassed now to see this thing. How do you organize the music? Uh, that, that I think that's that's a really good question because uh, I, at least in my opinion, uh, is 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 crucial crucial for any DJ to have their music well organized, you know. And not only the the two more important things for for a DJ related to the music is known very well your tracks the the most possible, and then have it well organized because uh, it doesn't matter how much you know your music that if you're not gonna find it easy during the set. Uh, you, you know, you're going to miss the, the right moment to play the right track. And we all DJs, we know how important is that. So, uh, and and that that's kind of the same, same thing. Like you would say, you, you would have the same way. We old school DJs, we used to have your vinyl in different boxes and you would put, you know, the early deep stuff, early nice stuff at the beginning of the box and then the harder stuff in the end. This is a kind of a good example, a good way to, and at least it's my way to organize my folders. Normally, I would have for every weekend when I go out. Let me say this. I, I hear the check a lot of new music during the week. I put it on folders, folders, and then on the plane when I go to Europe or wherever I go, I spend all that time completely isolated, no phones, no distractions, you know, checking the music and saying, okay, this is good for this, this is good for that. So normally, I arrive with a club, into a club with, with three folders, with like how you say, I would say current stuff I'm playing, maybe which is a lot for, for, for a night. And that way I'm going to have one, one folder would be kind of like a deep stuff, early end, early night stuff, you know, the, the music that you would start playing maybe the first 10. Club stuff, the stuff that you you play in every weekend, you know, like the, the, as I said, the current stuff, and then another folder with more like the big big tracks, the big bombs, and also the end of the night tracks. You know, if you have a classic or something like that that you think to play, you could put it in that. That does that doesn't mean you have everything organized because, as I said, maybe the first part of a set it would be 10, 15 tracks, and you have a hundred. But what what would be the point to have a folder with techno music if you're not gonna you're not gonna get play techno at the first part of a progressive set, right? When mm -hmm. I say progressive, I mean progressive mixing, not, not progressive music. I play progressive music, but I also play deep music, techno music, whatever. But when you do a progressive set, which is one that starts low and builds from that, uh, it makes sense that you, you, your first folder is going to have the stuff that you're going to play in the first hour, not, you know, why, why you're going to have a, you know, I don't know, uh, Sasha as a spander, where you're not going to play that the first half of the show. So keeping that way, at least for me, it helps me a lot to play the right music at the right time and not not uh, losing time on when, when I'm looking. Okay, I go to this, to that. So normally you will find um, all the different options for a, each time of the night. I think it's very important, as I said, uh, when, when you go to a club, you, 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 you know that you're going to play the music you like. Uh, you know you're going to try to play this kind of stuff or that kind of stuff, but, but you don't know exactly what track at what moment. So... Uh, you have to have in each folder at least three or four options for every moment. So then at the moment, you just decide within that. As I said, it doesn't make sense to have classics at, at, at the beginning of your, of your record box because you're not going to play them. So, but go, going technically, so when you got a, a track that you like, someone sent you, you like, so you put it in your computer or it goes straight to record box? No, no, no. At first, I, I, I always use iTunes to organize my music because it was faster and because... That was a time when records box wasn't as good as it is now. And then I keep it. Now on the new on the new computers, there's, as I said, there's no more iTunes, so you have to go through music. But still, uh, if you were used to iTunes to organize your music, just I mean, I mean just the name and the folder, and that's it, or the style of music, that's it. Then I go to record box to how you say to make the music playable on the computer on the on the CDJs. Which is, you know, uh, keeping all the, uh, uh, the an how you say, analyze. Sorry, my English is not very good, analyze, but I guess you yeah. understand. Uh, you analyze the track, and you know, uh, even when you know, there's many 
many ways of, of, of going around tracks within Recobox. You know, you can choose also to put colors of the tracks or the kind of the tracks or even your, your folders or even, you know, uh, uh, your loops, your cues, you know, all these kind of things that goes through Recobox. But the, I would say, so the first part of organizing tracks goes to iTunes and then go to Recobox. If I ask, if you ask me, and if I would start today a, a, a new career or, or what I would recommend, I would say, okay, just go direct on Recobox because you you would skip a step. But I'm so used to do it the other way, so I keep doing because it works for me. So a tip for new for new DJs would be for someone who started right now, it's like go straight to to Recordbox, no? I would say so, yes, because. It's not that something you do in iTunes that you don't do in Recordbox. It's just easier for me because I already come from 20 years of having, I keep all the old folders. I always keep them, you know, on, 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 on the side. So, and it's easier for me if you, wanna, if you want to look for that. Okay, I remember I played that track, uh, you know, or Mark gave me a track when I went to Spain that time, da, 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 da. So, and it's easier for me to find stuff or, or different versions of stuff, you know, I... I keep all my collection. I, 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 I always change my, my MacBook Pro, not because it's a newer or faster, because the, whatever fast is, is fast enough for me, for what I do, but because I always want ha a bigger uh, solid state hard drive. Now you can have four, four terabytes or eight terabytes, you know, which is like having all the history of music in your computer, yeah. which is <laughs> super, is the, is the coolest thing ever. So, and about the USB, so what was it? You have always full the USB of music or you just have the music you are going to play? Who you organize the USB? No, 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 no. I, I keep, it's like, as I said, each week, for example, I, I, I make three, three new folders with the stuff I'm, I plan to play. But then I have other folders that I stick there because sometimes I, while I'm playing, I remember, oh, I want to play this track and it's not in my current folder, but it's still something that I like. So I go back, okay, I remember I played this track Last time I played in Buenos Aires. Okay, so I go to that folder and look for it and I find it. Or, you know, the search function in the Pioneers are amazing, like especially in the, in the, in the, the new models. You know, mm -hmm. you can easily, before you have to scroll, with, with the scrolling function, you have to, to, to find the, the names. It was impossible, especially if you are in a hurry during the set. But these days you can type like in a computer and anything show up. Even if you put, you know, uh, you, you can look for the key of the track or for the artist or for the remixer. So it's, it's very, very handy to, to work that way. But that's why it's so crucial to pass all your music through Recordbox. Because if you don't, Recordbox, uh, the CD players are just going to work as a CDJ, but not with all the functions of the Recordbox. So, and, and now when it comes to the music, where do you find your music? It's all promos from Sudbit, from your label, or you, do you buy stuff on Beatport, or you work with friends? Where, where do you get your music? Everywhere, really. Like, of course, having a label and being a DJ for so long and traveling around the world for, for so many years, I get to know a lot of music producers and friends. So uh, one of the incomes, let's say the, 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 the coming ways of getting music is stuff they get sent to me as a DJ or to Sudbit as a label, right? Which I run with Graciano and Johnny Cosani. So we all together get a lot of stuff for that. Um, but then, of course, you know, I also, you get the, the promotion companies that they send music to, you know, I would say medium class to top DJs. We get um, promo companies, especially in England and America, that they send you a lot of stuff. Um, others, the, 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 the last, I would say, five years, it became more and more that the same software that used to be used by the promo companies are used are used are in use now from the labels direct so the labels use these these things like fat drop for example i don't know if the guys know but this is like a software that they send you music through that and you reply and you know before long that long time ago they will send you a bible and you have to write a, a letter and then send it fax it through 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 from argentina to england telling you that you like the track so if you don't If you didn't do, they, they wouldn't send you any more tracks. And <laughs> so everybody would be really intense on, on, on sending the feedback. But these days, you know, there's tons of music every day. I, I have, you know, hundreds, hundreds of, of emails with music. But as I said, uh, the main income would be um, DJs Direct to me or the label, promo companies, and, uh, and, and labels direct that send it to me, like, like Henry or whatever has its own label or you. And you send it to me. And then, of course, that's, that's the free part of, of the music. Then's the part that you buy. Um, 
if you ask me, most of the music I play, I get it from the first three options I said. I, I buy a lot of music, not necessarily because I, I need to play it, but one, I think it's a way to give back to the industry. You know, I used to spend, you know, when vinyl days, we, any DJ would spend no less than 2,000 pounds in records every month, you know, which, and especially when we wouldn't make any money, it was like all our money spending on vinyl. So these days, we get most, most music for free. So the least we could do is like give back to the industry and the new producers and the new labels. So, you know, everyone that has a label and, and you know too, uh, it's not that what people think that we, we, we swim in money on, on the labels. There's no like that, you know? So we need how much the support means. So sometimes I see an artist that I like and he put a, a, an album and I go and buy it. Maybe I'm never going to play it. Never. Only in my house one day. But it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a way just to su give, give support back. And then, of course, even when we get tons and tons of music sent, you never get sent all the music. There's always stuff that you would like to get sent and you don't, so you go and buy it, you know? Uh, and so you go to Bitport or, or, you know, or Juno or sometimes Bandcamp, for example, for indie stuff. I really like indie stuff. And sometimes I, I try to make remixes of stuff with friends from, you know, I like the, the of course, the musical part of the indie music. Uh, a lot of stuff, you maybe you, you may hear a band in Spotify and then you go to Bandcamp and you can buy that. You know, and and sometimes even in 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 the Apple Store, you know, I, I go and, and and buy on iTunes uh, music that you know. Uh, then you, unfortunately, it's, it's only a, a MP4. It's, it's not the best quality, but you know, then as I said, then you, you have the Pioneer V10 that you can make a bit of compression and make it sound like the way you like. No, that's a good cheap idea. No, like the V10 has a compressor. So so you still buy. It's a, it's a really good one. So yes, of course. Wow. I, I didn't expect that. <laughs> uh, I, te I, tell you for, I tell you, for example, you know, uh, I, I love bands like, for example, The Orb or Fortet, for example, uh, or Bonobo, you know. And I play every now and then I play music from them. And always when I do is remixes. But I always go and buy their album because I know that, you know, that's where the support comes, you know. And, you know, I, I think I, I, I feel happy. And if... These days, especially living in Argentina, you know, it's kind of difficult, but I would buy the, the vinyl of everybody just to, just to have it because, as I said, I support them and I also, I, I still like to, to have that, that vinyl feeling in my hands. That, that, Not necessarily for DJ. I never DJ with vinyl these days, but I still have the turntables in my house and, and, and I enjoy that, that feeling very much. And we can see an amazing vinyl collection behind you, so... Yeah, we probably you have probably thousands and thousands of, of vinyls. You don't need to even say it. We can we can see it behind you. <laughs> that, that's because that's because I'm old. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're, you're you're a really truly lover of, of music, and I think you really show on this on the music when you play. You show you transmit that feeling in to your crowd. So imagine now Thank like you. I have a question that really I think it really for them. It happens to a lot of DJs. So when you arrive to a club and you thought you were going to play some kind of music, you know, this, you have already a, a mindset like, okay, I want to play this style of music, uh, blah, 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 you know, typical. And then you arrive and maybe the vibe of the club is different or there's a DJ playing before you that is playing some kind of not unexpected type of music. Uh, how do you face that? So you change your session, your mix, your collection, or you play it anyways what you were going to play? Well, um... I would say there's, there's a couple of different answers for that. Um, if it could be a festival where you play show sets, which I hate, um, then probably oh, you always play within your, your boundaries, right? Uh, even if, if the DJ before me is playing hard techno, I'm not going to become a hard techno DJ suddenly, right? So I'm gonna, always going to be me. But having said that, uh, you know, if it's a show set, I'll say, I'm gonna, okay, maybe I'm going to go direct to, to the harder part of my music, you know, just for two hours. If it's going to be a long set, then then it's different. Probably I'm going to let the other record finish completely, like maybe 30 seconds of silence, then play like an intro, long intro, try to respect, respectfully let the people be out of the mood that they've been before, uh, because it's not the problem of the other DJ, especially in a festival. It would be different if it's a warm-up DJ. Then it, it should be respectful and, and play according what the main DJ is coming to play. But um, 
but on a festival, you, you can't expect that. So then, as I said, I would play like a, like a a cappella or a small intro, you know, like trying to get people into the mood I'm going to go. And then, as I said, if it's a long set, I'm going to do that. If it's a short set, I would just, as I said, not go, not necessarily try to go with the flow because sometimes that is suicide. You know, sometimes let's say uh, if, if, uh, if, if it, as I said, again, uh, there's, there's a DJ play super hard trance, you know, uh, 128 BPM. I, I, I cannot follow that. So there's no way to try because, you know, one or twice in my life in the past, I tried to do that and I learned my way that there's no way. So it's like saying, okay, um, that, that's not for me. I'm going to try to do my own. So as I said, the, the best probably would be for long sets, quit completely, silence, stars from zero. And, and, and if it's a festival, you just try to play the mo from the stuff you have and you like the most similar to, to that. And then, of course, sometimes after 20, 25 minutes, you can get, go down, how say, deep, die, uh, die deep into, into your own sound, you know? Yeah, that sound. Um, do you find your sets always as a sad beat sound? So you know, I can imagine like uh, you are the ambassador, the owner, owner of sad beat. You think your sets are always like a sad beat sound or do you take, not forcefully, not like imagine like we mentioned before, you need to change the music because the DJ uh, before you play or something happened. If you have fully freedom, do you find your set as sad beat sound or you take journeys to another musical uh, type, some different uh, type of sounds? Um, no, well, let me say, sad beat has a certain sound, but it's kind of open. So you have from, you know, like a, uh, some deep stuff or more some, some up-tempo club progressive stuff. So it's not just one sound. But having said that, also my sets as a DJ are pro mostly long and, and I get the chance to play a lot of variety of music and sounds and labels and, pro and producers. Uh, so I would say sad beat uh, is, of course, it has all my identity and, and the guys that run the label with me, but it's not just that. So uh, I would say maybe 30, 40% of a set for me could be uh, certain music, but at the same time, you know, uh, there are a lot of other stuff, you know, like stuff from labels, like from, you know, compact, you know, of, I, I'm trying to say labels that are really different than what we put, but I, I could also play, you know, uh, or, you know, or, uh, Natura Sonoris, for example, Henry's label, you know, uh, the, the, the music they play, they, they put on the label is, is kind of different than Sudbit, but it's something that I would happily play all the time. So, you know, or, or many, many labels, uh, you know, and of course, you know, lab similar labels as well, like Soundgarden, you know, but uh, there are many, we all know. But um, as I said, uh, Sudbit is, even when it's open uh, and, and we, we put different kinds of stuff, uh, we, li we like to, to, to push you know, certain sound and as a label and me as a DJ, I'm a bit, a bit wider, especially because of the long sets. Yeah, because I saw you playing, that's the question, because I saw you play so many times and one of the things I admire the most is your versatility. So you can play in any type of sound in the middle of techno DJs, in the middle of prog DJs, house DJs, you always have the key to introduce your sound into your own personality and then you sometimes surprise with track that I would never expect to play and it's something I really and I, probably this comes only after 30 or 40 years of playing so much and knowing how to make in in a in an elegant way uh, this super wide variety of sound so now imagine okay so now imagine like you are this is a common thing I think that all the DJs suffer sometimes it's imagine when you play a track that you just select you are ready put into the mix, you play the first bars of the track and then you suddenly feel that it's a wrong track. That is, oh, this track, it doesn't fit right now into the set. What, what do you do? Well, it happens. You, you try not to, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it never happened because it happens. Especially these days, there's so many music. You get new music every week, all the time. And that's, I think I said before, that's why it's so important to know your music uh, because you're going to create like a, like a long five, six, 10 hour set. You know, you get to know your tracks. The, the, that's the best way to play them the right way. But of course, 
one, every now and then it happens that you hear a track on the plane or in your house and you think it has a certain vibe and then it doesn't, you know, then the, there is a sub bass that you feel in the club, but not in your, your headphones that is, is, is completely changing the, the mood of you were building and then you're like, whoa, and you feel embarrassed. Sometimes I look down because I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know, I don't know if people notice or not, but you as a DJ, you feel like, oh, I'm such a, I'm professional DJ playing this record at the wrong moment. You know, I, I feel embarrassed, you know, like I, I, I'm, I'm very shy. So, uh, but, you know, there's, there's not, not much more you can do that, you know, if, if you have, for example, it, it would depend, it would depend also, for example, if, if the track goes a bit deep than that you wanted, you could easily drop a loop from the, from the other CDJ and give it a bit more, more group, right? Mm-hmm. But then the problem, the problem especially is when you too early play a big record, you know, a, a big sound record, because that's, that's more difficult to, to justify in your mind or to, or to hide that, that you didn't want to, you know, uh, so that sometimes, but then that's a, another example, for example, that that may oblige you to change the way you wanted to run a night. And then you are thinking, oh, the first hour, I'm going to play very, very deep and slow. But then you play a track that you thought it was deep, but it's not deep at all at, at the 40 minutes, for example. And then you, you're not going to go back again to deep because that would be even more, more strange. So you're going to have to maybe start to follow that path and that would change the way you were playing. So you have to be prepared for that. So that's why knowing your records and have them organized is so important. But again, it may happen sometimes that, as I said, especially the sound, not the music, because you hear the, the, the tracks many times uh, in your house and on the plane before, or in the hotel before the show. But something that any DJ knows, uh, I'm not going to discover anything, and you know as well as a musician and DJ, is that a track, you, you can tell you know a track 100% once you at least play it once. You, you may hear a track 100 times in your house, but it's not until you play once in front of an audience that you really know how it is that track. So sometimes you fail. Sometimes you think one thing and then it's not exactly. But as I said, especially because of the sound of the track and not for the music. That, that's an incredible tip. I think it's some, sometimes we, we forgot all, all these things like until, until you don't try the track into the vibe, into the real crowd. It's, you don't face exactly how it works the track with the, in your sets. It's super. So, what tell us like about your um, the usage you do about the effects and the filters and so do you use it? Or what what's your skills or your technical uh, type of mixing with effects and and? I, I'm not really. I'm not. I'm not really a effects guy. I'm more maybe filters. Yes, filters mm-hmm. I like, but um, but. I have I have like a more like a subtle way of playing music and I really work I, I put mostly my my how you say my mind and my effort on the, on the, on the subtle mixing and and layering things on top rather than doing effects. Uh, I'm not saying it's not good. I actually I, I admire a lot of this is that they do it really well. But I think the best of me comes from from layering different tracks on top and and making like with a with lot of different tracks make, make, making like, like a big picture of things. Um, but what I do use a lot is, is, is the loops. Uh, that, that would be the, the, my most, um, how you say, extra element that helps me that, a lot. That was the next, actually, that was the next question about the use, the, the uh, use ah, of Okay. The, but before going the, to the, the, the loops, so... What's yes, the, because if you use the pioneer, um, so what's your yes. favorite reverbs? I uh, favorite effects, and how do you use? Them? I, I I I I mostly use the filters, but it's, it's, it's as I said, uh, it's it's only for my, maybe some cuts or, or or for moments that you you want to to get a bit more energy, so you you, you filter a little bit, but uh, it's not something that I use a lot. I I go more into as I said, uh, using the loops. And, 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 and let create the things I want to with, with the tracks or with the conjunction of different tracks, you know? Uh, I really like when people is dancing one track in their minds and then suddenly they discover they into another track and, but the other, the other track has been already for three minutes, but they didn't realize it. That, that's, that's the, 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 the thing I like from when I play, you know, like, or, or I try to achieve, you know? Um, 
as I said, I'm not like a super techie guy, you know, uh, and, 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 and the way I play for the progressive mixing and, and the subtle way, it weighs, it works really well with the loops. That's why I, I, I prefer to, to go bigger on the, on the next question. It's funny because I think you saying like you play in a more classical way, I think nowadays is being an original DJ. What I mean original is that you are not doing what the others are doing. Like he's playing with a lot of effects, loops. So I feel like listening to you and explaining this, okay, so the way you, you, where you mix, it's really original. It's kind of not following the trend. It's, it's becoming doing a classical thing that nobody actually is doing nowadays. So it's doing more the experience of a long, a long mixes, mixing it together, so gentle. So it's something awesome. It's something awesome that I really, that I really uh, admire. So no facing when you sometimes do long sets, you are super well known. It's one, I think, one of your goals. Uh, it's long sets, super long sets. I know that you play even 17 hours or probably more. So how do you prefer a long set? What it makes different between a normal set and a super extended set? Well, um, oh, thank you for what you say before. Um, I think, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's part of, you know, like a, uh, the identity when you have or the personality you have as a DJ is not something that comes overnight, right? It takes years. And and the good thing about, you know, sometimes things, people, how, how is when they ask, Sometimes how is uh, being in the scene for so long? The best thing about that is that you know what you're doing, you know, and, and you feel very secure. It's like uh, when you see uh, older players on a, on a football game, you know, they know where to stand. They, they, they have the, the, the relaxation and, the, and the, the security of what they're doing, you know, and, and that that's applies to, to many moments in your DJ day in day out you know like as you said when you have to follow a techno dj you don't you don't get scared because you know what you're doing you know so going back to to the question uh long sets is is my favorite thing actually i hate i hate do short sets when 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 i go to a festival uh, i go because i know it's important and because there's a a, a nice crowd to be with and sometimes Festivals, I don't know, for example, like Loveland uh, in, in, in Amsterdam, they have an amazing lineup and, and you want to be part of that. But when they told you you have 90 minutes for playing or two hours, I hate it because I don't know what to play. You know, I, I, I love music so much. So it's like I, I feel like, you know, I, I don't want to let any track out when, when I arrive the, the weekend. And you have all this music that you want to play. And they say, no, you have two hours. And, and, I, and I, I, I see my my list of folders, I have maybe I have two, three hundred, three hundred tracks and I want to play them all, you know, and say, okay, no, give me 20 hours. But I know it's, it's not going to be that way. So long sets are, are when I feel like my, the, I say, my, the best myself is, is within a long set. So uh, it's not that special. I mean, it's not that, it's, it's only about a, of common sense in my, in my mind. The same way I, I was explaining earlier to you that is, for example, I organize the folders, you know, the, the deep end of the deep um, beginning of the night stuff and then the middle. When you, when, you, when you do a long set, you have to understand that people is going to be there for six hours, seven hours, ten hours. Uh, last year we did with Guy J in, at, um, in Montreal, 24 hours, you know. Uh, so you have to understand first the progression, which is very, very important. You know, the way you, you have to hypnotize the people, you know. It's like, I, for example... I, I don't expect, I, I wouldn't think of doing a, I don't know, a, a, a 10 hour set playing tech house music, for example, because that's not music for a long, long set. You know, it's it, this music that works really well in maybe one hour, two, three hours, beam. But the music we like to play and the way we like to play, the, the way of progressive mixing is perfect for long sets because you can really dive between different stuff, dif, 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 between different styles in a really subtle way. So um, he, even when it's not gonna, it's not gonna be set seven hours like this, you start 120 and you end up at whatever. Uh, it's really the slow changes and the moments what, where, where, where the, the really, how you say, that kind of hypnotized thing comes. And even, it's, it's not even about the, the tracks individually, especially in the last, I would say, seven, eight years. The way before music, uh, 
on a, in a set, the tracks would be, they were really important individually. You would say, as I said, for example, earlier, Sasha's expander, you know, uh, or, or Heaven Sent from Bedrock, you know, a, a massive track that everybody would know and everybody would be expecting for you to play. And so uh, it was a bit more like a, okay, they know that at the peak of the night, I'm going to play these tracks and everybody's going to be happy. These days, music is not like that. Uh, there's, there's no uh, Eric Pritz uh, aftermath, you know, or, 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 or those especially big records that everybody knows. There, sometimes there, there is one or two, but mainly the sets are built with a lot of unknown pieces of music that all together has, they have to make sense. And you are responsible to make sense of that. We, it's, like, it's like a, how you say, uh, like a, putting together different pieces of things to, to create a bigger one. So uh, I think the long set is, is common sense on the way you plan the night. You don't drop the, the, all the music at, at the first two hours if you have to have play six. And if you have organized it properly, your, your folders, and you have interesting music, then you can drop completely different stuff. Like, you know, I, I always enjoy playing, for example, a, a Depeche Mode track or a Pink Floyd track, you know. But if you hear, it's like the, the group is always keep the same. Like, like it's the progressive group uh, uh, or in, in, in the same section that I've been playing. And then in the middle, there is a track that it doesn't belong completely to that, but you, you cannot tell it because it's, it's, it's played in the right way. So when you have six, seven, ten hours, uh, you know that, you, how you say, it's like you have to organize your energy, you know. It's like if you have to have run a marathon, you're not going to start running at the most you can because then you know that half the marathon you're going to be dead, you know. You have to keep your energy. So, um, but again, uh, it's hard to explain because for me, it's all common sense. It's like when I say to this to you, like, for example, uh, you, you have to keep your, your, your energy. Uh, for me, it's obvious. However, I saw many DJs not doing this properly. Like the, the, the excitement, you know, wins over, over the, the, the minds and, and they start playing all the big records in the first two hours. And then when the people really need the big records, they don't have it. So I think it's, it's really about the peace of mind, relax, uh, don't, don't get too excited at the beginning, you know, plan for the long term, you know, and, but, but the key, super important is to try to get the, the people attention in the mind, you know, uh, the progressive DJs and the, and the, and the, and the progressive mixing and the long sets are not hands in the air all night. Are quite, this is maybe four or five moments during the set. It's more like, people dancing here and and that's very important to understand and you for example when you have these long sets uh, the folders you have in the record box are different so you make more folders for a long set or use the same folders that you can do on a normal set you have extra folders for long sets well uh, my, mostly the sets i do every week are six hours so my mainly three folder with a hundred tracks each that works perfectly for that. But when I go to stereo Montreal, where I play on my own 12, 15 hours or with guy or with other DJ at, for a whole 24 hours, then I have to have more music. And that's the only time I bring my computer with me, not to play with the computer, but yes, but to check because sometimes after 18 hours, you, you, you don't remember if you play this track or maybe the other DJ played that track, you know? So, uh, I, I try to have like a like a like a notebook, but the computer, you know, like something like I I would say to to remind me of ideas or stuff. Or sometimes uh, when you when you play a super long set, like like twenty hour set or something like happens, for example, in Burning Man, which uh, at Burning Man I don't bring my computer because it would be destroyed. But uh, is these are the shows where in the middle of the show you suddenly remind of a track. Sometimes if you, do, for example, the other DJ plays something or, or and very much sim, as simply as you see someone pass and remind me of something and you're going to play the track, but you don't even remember what it is, you know? So you need the computer to, to go and, and quickly uh, put it on the pen drive and play it. But that's why, as I said, I always like to have a big solid hard drives on, on my computer to have all the music. I would die if I have to say, okay, I need to cut my, my, um, my, my, my music library in half because 
my computer cannot carry with him. I, 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 it would be terrible for me. I really like to have all my options, even when probably you're not gonna, you're not gonna go for that. You know, you mostly you go through the music you you, you expect to play. You know, but um, I, I I really feel uh, way more happy if I have everything on my side. Everything. So and you're especially actually you know besides the long uh, sets solo sets, you're actually well known for your long back to back sets or just for two back to back sets. You have. Uh, so many gigs during the year uh, with doing back to back with uh, friends and other DJs. So, what makes it different? So, what tips would you give to all the DJs that are watching us about how to face a back to back uh, with another DJ? Um, I think, yeah, I do a lot of back to backs. Probably in the past, I did like 200 sometimes. Um, I think the most important thing is that is is that is something that it has to has to happen because you really want it. Not because the promoter said, what about if you play with this and that? No, no, You have to play with a friend, someone that you like, you know, because you're going to spend a lot of hours with the other guy. And you, it's not a competition. That's very important. A back-to-back -back is never a competition. It's actually you and the DJ together preparing something to give to the people, right? And when, when it's like that, you have to be generous with the other DJ and the other DJ has to be generous with you to make the, the, the most of the set. So that's why... Uh, You're not gonna like to to be like the 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 midfield player giving all the all the all the the balls for the other guy to kick if if you don't like it. You know what I mean? You have to be your friend. Uh, sometimes, for example, if you know uh, when I play with 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 one some DJs, uh, I'm play more like a, the deeper stuff, and the other is more explosive. And sometimes it's the other way around. You know. So as I said, it's important to both understand that. It's not a competition. It's not that I play a track, big track, and then you play a bigger one. Because then after an hour, we run out of big tracks and, and the people is run out of energy. You know, it's also a kind of build. So that's very important to, to choose a partner that you like musically and personally. And then it's very important to understand that, as I said, you, you, you are together for, for four, five, six hours, 10 hours, whatever. And you have to trust the other DJ. So you ha it must be someone that, that you like what they do. For example, when I play with Nick, uh, which is the, the DJ that I play the most, the back-to-backs, um, even though I, I did with Guy, with Henry, with Danny, you know, with others, but mostly I do my, my back-to-backs with Nick. And in the first time we did, I think it was uh, like 15 years ago or uh, maybe a bit more in Punta del Este in Uruguay. And since then we did hundreds. And we never, ever, talk about music, never. We always go to have dinner or something or before the gig and we never plan anything at all. But why? Not because we are, we are super DJs, just because we know that, I know that I like the music he plays and he knows that he likes the music I play. So it's not going to be any, any, any bad surprises from what he plays, you know? And, and then it's just about finding the right group, which he's, he's really good for that. Nick, oh, Nick always starts the sets when we play together. Not oh, only really? because... Uh, he, Yes, always, start. because I think, first, because he, he was already a big DJ when I wasn't. So uh, as a matter of respect, I, I give him the, 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 op the opening. I think it's, it's fair, you know, he's, he's a legend. Um, I used to travel from Buenos Aires to Liverpool, all the way to Cream in Liverpool to hear him and Polo for play, you know, just for three oh. days and then come back to Argentina, you know. First, I, I used to do that for Frankie Knuckles first in, in, the, in the early 90s. And then in the late 90s, uh, I used to go, when, when I started hearing that about Cream in Liverpool, that it was an incredible club and the sound system and the, these different uh, areas and stuff like that. I, I went from Buenos Aires to Liverpool many times to hear Paul and, and Nick. So uh, when I get to play with him the first times, I was like, like how you say, pinching myself. I say, is this true? You know, like now I'm playing with this guy back to back. And especially Nick. He's such a nice guy. He's probably the nicest guy in the music business. So, you know, it's, for me, it's, 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 it's such, a, such a treat to play with him. So the only thing is, as I said, I, he always created a group because also he's really good for that. He, within two, three tracks, boom, the, the, the room is locked and the party is going. To me, sometimes it takes me like half an hour to, to get a long set in, in, the, in the right way, right? But Nick is, is very good for that. Uh, and then... The, the other thing we do, and with any DJ I play, and it's always been the same, and it's not because I say, but it's, it's just common knowledge, is that we play three tracks each. 
because um, if you try to do a back-to-back -back with playing one track each DJ, it's very, very rarely that you're going to have like a long set with, with, with a nice flow. And flow, we all know, is, is, is super important uh, because you are not playing hit after hit after hit after hit. So the flow is incredibly important. And if you, if you play three tracks each, that gives each DJ more or less 20, 15 to 20 minutes. So you have your own 20 minutes to say something musically as a DJ, and then the other DJ will come. Sometimes also it's important, especially if you play with a DJ that is not necessarily the same sound of you, that be generous with your last track. Don't play a last track that has a difficult outro because you remember that the other DJ maybe has to play his own his first track into your last, and maybe they don't even know what it is. You know, so if you have a track that the, the outro suddenly stops and start, a girl starts screaming, don't play that as a last track because, you know, you, you don't do the other guy any favor. You know, you have to be uh, that's anyway loops these days. We, di we didn't talk about the loops, but loops these days change a lot of that part because, you know, when, when an outro is kind of difficult, you just prepare a, a loop before on the week uh, on, on the on the record box and then you just automize auto. Automize that? Uh, automize? Yeah, automatize, no? Yeah, automatize that. So that, that makes life easy for the other DJ, you know? Especially because, as I said, you not always know all the tracks of the DJ. Sometimes, for example, after, sometimes I, I don't see Nick for four months, for example. And then we get together, and he doesn't know what I'm playing, and I don't know what he's playing. So, and, and, and that's not, that's not justified for that. We, we, need, we need to do it well anyway. So loops are, are super, super good for that. Yeah, yeah, especially for not for extend uh, the set, give some freedom. So we, oh, right for, for 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 progressive mixing, loops are are the best thing ever, you know. Because um, I remember, like back in the days, you know, when and that's that's the 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 main difference for me within playing with vinyl and playing with with computers or or with CDJs or with live or whatever you want is that way before a track that lasts seven minutes, uh, you, you have the, the last one minute to mix and that's it. And if that, that last track has a bigger hi-hat than the one you mix in later, n there's not going to be a, like a really subtle uh, mixing, right? Only if you are Sasha. Sasha would be, he, he was the king of this. But uh, uh, like, you know, the loops are, are the perfect way to, to really that kind of like a get really one track into another or, as I said before, if you want to bring a classic, you want to bring a, a, a old track that they just set out properly, as a sound properly, you can keep the, 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 the groove from the track before and keep it the whole track of, of the next one, maybe cutting the bass or just, just the middle or just the hi-hats. But, you know, to, to keep that kind of mental thing, the loops from the pioneers are the best thing ever. You know, it's, 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 it completely changes the game. I guess if, if you, for example, if you play hard techno, if you play tech house, it's not so important because all those records, uh, they are not subtle music. They are, they, are, they, they are all super high on mids and high hats. So there's always something driving on top, like, ch -ch -ch -ch. but progressive is not like that. So uh, when it's subtle, those loops really help you and save you most of the time. So we only have a few minutes left, actually. Uh, so, okay. uh, well, we continue on Monday in Spanish. Exactly. <laughs> so, first of all, um, uh, for the last minute or last two minutes we have, I want to ask you, what three DJ tips would you give to the audience for someone that wants to start into DJing or someone who just start and and needs some orientation about DJing? What three tips would you give? The most important for you. Well, on a general level, I would say, first, of course, you, uh, you know, you, you have to work hard, have passion, you know, try all the time. You know, I used to, when I, when I, when I was a kid, uh, my, all, all my friends during the week were going to play football or go to the cinema, and I would lock into my house trying to practice to, to be best. That really pays the way, you know, pain, uh, organizing your time to, 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 to prepare and improve because practice is really important in this. Um, then, of course, once 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 you get some kind of success, it's very important to be well surrounded. This is this is not like a DJ tip; it's a personal tip, you know, uh, because we saw many many DJs becoming successful and becoming idiots, you know, 
and and you don't want that to happen to you. So it's very important to have your friends or your family or your girlfriend, someone that is going to take care of you, you know, and not to mention the tragic things like you can end up, if you see Avicii, and I always use the same example, the tragic of Avicii is that he was a super successful guy, super talented, regardless you like the music or not, he was incredibly successful, but he was nobody that loved him around, and, and he ended up alone and, and, and dying lonely because of that. You know, it's kind of crazy. Um, but then on a DJ side, the most important for me is having your own strong identity and personality. Don't try to follow what Lee Burge is doing, whatever he, he, how good he is, because he's been doing that for 20 years. That's why he owns his sound. The, the best DJs you hear have their own sound. You hear, for example, Richie Hotting or John Dewitt or Sasha or Carl Cox, uh, and, and you can tell who is who without knowing, without seeing them, you know, because they have their own identity and personality. And that's crucial in this career because there's thousands of these. If you realize that you sound the same as a thousand friends of you, then I would worry. I, 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 you have to really believe on what you like and push that. The, where, where you put your passion is, is where you're going to be the, the best. You know, the best you is going to come if you do what you really like, not what wherever is trendy, not... So nobody's going to respect you if today you're a techno DJ and next next, next year a deep house DJ because uh, uh, Mixmax said that, you know? Oh, Hernan, I think Instagram going to need to buy more, more servers because the amount of wisdom and tips you just give us today, uh -huh. it's so Shut big up. that they're going to need to buy more servers because it was amazing. I see, amazing. So, Hernan, thank you so much. As a reminder, uh, we did this today in English, but on Monday... Uh, same time, 9 p.m. Uh, Barcelona, Madrid, and 4 p.m. Buenos Aires. We want to do the same chat of today, but in Spanish. Para nuestros amigos de España, eh, el, el, el lunes haremos lo mismo de hoy, pero en, en español, eh, en mismo horario. Thank you so much, Hernán. It was uh, such a pleasure to talk with you, and I'm impressed about the, the wisdom you just, just shared today. Thank you so much. Thank you.